The trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5, is the largest of the cranial nerves and is relatively uncomplicated in that it conveys only two types of innervation, general sensation from the face and head, and motor supply to eight muscles. Nevertheless, the trigeminal nerve seems very complex because it has an extensive distribution area and a large number of named branches. Additionally, the trigeminal nerve has an intimate association with autonomic nerves because the four parasympathetic motor ganglia of the head are all physically attached to branches of the trigeminal nerve, and it is frequently used as a highway by both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers that innervate smooth muscles and glands within the face and head. Finally, the part of the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, that conveys taste from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue also rides along with the trigeminal nerve for part of its course. Let's start making sense of the trigeminal nerve by discussing three key things. First, we will go over the two specific types of innervation that are conveyed by cranial nerve 5. Then, we will examine the formation of the three major anatomical divisions of the nerve and the bony routes that they each take to distribute to their targets. Finally, we will look at the ways that other nerves use the trigeminal nerve branches to travel to their own target structures. Note that the trigeminal nerve has many, many named branches that distribute widely throughout the face and head. We will discuss very few of them here. Our purpose is to develop a big picture understanding of trigeminal nerve organization rather than to exhaustively examine nerve branching patterns. There are many textbook resources that you can use to help learn about individual nerves if you so desire. The trigeminal nerve can be thought of as the master sensory nerve for the face and head. It provides general somatic afferent, or GSA, innervation to the scalp, face, eye, paranasal sinuses, teeth, anterior tongue, temporal mandibular joint, oral and nasal cavities, and the meninges of the anterior and middle cranial fossae. Remember that GSA innervation includes things such as touch, pain, pressure, temperature, and vibration. Proprioception, too, is a type of general somatic afferent innervation, and the trigeminal nerve provides proprioceptive feedback from the muscles that it innervates, and likely also conveys proprioceptive feedback from muscles that receive motor innervation from other cranial nerves that do not have their own sensory component. As we discuss the sensory functions of trigeminal nerve, it's important to remember that it does not convey any special senses, such as smell, taste, hearing, or balance. This is a common source of confusion and can be avoided by always being very specific about which sensory components you are talking about. For example, GSA versus GVA versus SVA. The second of the two components carried by the trigeminal nerve is special visceral efferent, or SVE. This refers to voluntary motor innervation provided to the four muscles of mastication, medial pterygoid, lateral pterygoid, masseter, and temporalis muscles, plus four other additional muscles, tensor tympani, tensor veli palatini, mylohyoid, and the anterior belly of the digastric muscle. 4 plus 4. All of the muscles supplied by trigeminal nerve are voluntary striated muscles, just like the muscles of our limbs and trunk. The reason that their innervation is referred to as special visceral efferent rather than general somatic efferent has to do with the fact that their embryological origin is from the first pharyngeal arch rather than from somites or other sources of mesoderm. Now let's look at the origin of the trigeminal nerve and the routes that its three subdivisions take to reach their targets. The large root of the trigeminal nerve is attached to the lateral pons near the cerebellopontine angle. This root contains axons of lower motor neurons leaving the CNS and axons of primary sensory neurons entering the CNS. Within the middle cranial fossa, the root forms the large trigeminal ganglion, sometimes also called the semilunar or gessarian ganglion. Projecting distally from the trigeminal ganglion are the three subdivisions of cranial nerve 5, ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular. Combining Roman numerals with Hindu-Arabic numerals, these divisions are also referred to as V1, V2, and V3, respectively. Understand that V1 exits the cranial vault via the superior orbital fissure, V2 exits via foramen rotundum, 
and V3 exits via Foramen Ovale. Let's now look more closely at the sensory innervation conveyed by the trigeminal nerve. With one exception, all of the cell bodies of the pseudo-unipolar primary sensory neurons are located within the trigeminal ganglion. The peripheral processes of these cells are distally connected to specialized receptor organs. The central processes of these cells enter the CNS and synapse onto secondary sensory neurons located in the trigeminal sensory nucleus. This nucleus is very large and has anatomically and functionally distinct subdivisions. The largest, located within the pontine tegmentum, is called the principal trigeminal sensory nucleus. Extending rostrally from the principal nucleus is the mesencephalic trigeminal nucleus, which, as the name suggests, extends up into the midbrain. There is also a caudal extension from the principal nucleus called the spinal trigeminal nucleus, which reaches the spinal cord and eventually blends into the dorsal gray matter there. These subdivisions are associated with specific sensory modalities, though there is likely overlap between them. The spinal trigeminal nucleus is thought primarily to receive pain and temperature sensation from the face and head. The principal, or pontine, trigeminal nucleus is thought primarily to receive touch sensation from the face. Finally, the mesencephalic nucleus is thought primarily to receive proprioceptive sensation from the muscles of mastication. The mesencephalic nucleus is also the site of the one exception that I mentioned earlier regarding the location of primary sensory neurons. The mesencephalic nucleus itself, not the trigeminal ganglion, is the home of the pseudo-unipolar primary sensory neurons that convey proprioception from the muscles of mastication. This is a curiosity and seems to be the only instance in which pseudo-unipolar sensory neuron cell bodies are located within the CNS rather than within a peripheral sensory ganglion. Next, let's consider the motor innervation carried by the trigeminal nerve. The cell bodies of the SVE neurons that form the motor component of trigeminal nerve are all located in the motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, also called the motor nucleus of five, or the masticator nucleus. This nucleus is located in the pontine tegmentum and is the home of the cell bodies of the lower motor neurons that innervate the eight muscles, four plus four, supplied by the trigeminal nerve. The axons of the lower motor neurons travel ventrolaterally from the masticator nucleus to exit the lateral pons within the large trigeminal root. The motor axons continue towards the trigeminal ganglion, but do not enter it. Instead, all of the motor fibers join V3 in passing through foramen ovale to enter the infratemporal fossa. Here, the motor fibers mix with the sensory fibers of V3 and no longer run as a separate bundle. Muscular nerve branches, including both motor and proprioceptive sensory fibers, then distribute to the 4 plus 4 muscles innervated by trigeminal nerve. Medial pterygoid, lateral pterygoid, masseter, temporalis, tensor tympani, tensor villi palatini, mylohyoid, and the anterior belly of digastric muscles. Remember that all of the motor innervation is distributed with V3. The V1 and V2 divisions of trigeminal nerve are purely sensory and convey no motor innervation. As mentioned earlier, the apparent simplicity of trigeminal nerve organization is often distorted by the fact that other nerves run with trigeminal nerve branches in order to reach their targets. Remember that general somatic afferent and special visceral efferent innervation are the only two intrinsic components of the trigeminal nerve. Thus, cranial nerve 5 itself does not include any autonomic or special sensory innervation. However, autonomic fibers, as well as some special sensory taste fibers, run with branches of trigeminal nerve, and in fact become anatomically indistinct from these trigeminal nerve branches. Why is this important? Let's look at a specific example. The lingual nerve is a branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, V3. As its name suggests, the lingual nerve distributes to the tongue and provides general sensation to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. If the lingual nerve were caught proximal to the tongue, one would lose general sensation to that portion of the tongue and it would feel numb. That is pretty straightforward. However, in such an injury, one would also lose taste sensation from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, as well as saliva production from some of the ipsilateral salivary glands because of the fact that part of cranial nerve 7, specifically corda tympani, 
joins up with the lingual nerve in the infratemporal fossa and runs all the way with it to the tongue. Because of this anatomy, it would be nearly impossible for damage to the lingual nerve not to also affect the parasympathetic and special sensory fibers conveyed by corda tympani nerve. But let's be clear, this fact does not mean that the trigeminal nerve contains autonomic and special sensory components. It does not. Let's finish by looking at the four pairs of parasympathetic ganglia in the head, ciliary, pterygopalatine, submandibular, and otic. None of these ganglia receive synaptic input from the trigeminal nerve because the trigeminal nerve has no autonomic component. However, each one of these ganglia has a direct physical connection to branches of the trigeminal nerve. This makes sense because, again, the trigeminal nerve distributes so extensively that it provides a perfect highway for pre- and postganglionic autonomic fibers to travel along as they make their way to their target structures. The ciliary ganglion is located in the orbit posterior to the eyeball and has a physical connection to the nasociliary branch of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, V1. Preganglionic synaptic input to the ciliary ganglion is provided by the oculomotor nerve and provides motor innervation to two smooth muscles of the eye, sphincter pupillae and the ciliary body. The pterygopalatine ganglion, sometimes called the sphenopalatine ganglion, is located within the pterygopalatine fossa and is physically connected to the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, V2. It receives preganglionic synaptic input from the facial nerve, via the greater petrosal nerve, and provides motor innervation to the lacrimal gland and mucosal glands in the nasal cavity and palate. The submandibular ganglion is located between the mandible and the tongue and is physically connected to the lingual nerve branch of V3. It receives preganglionic synaptic input from the facial nerve via corda tympani and provides motor innervation to the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands as well as smaller salivary glands associated with the lips and oral cavity. The otic ganglion is located in the infratemporal fossa near foramen ovale and is physically connected to the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, V3. It receives preganglionic synaptic input from the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9, and provides motor innervation to the parotid salivary gland. Finally, many postganglionic sympathetic axons that ascend into the head along arteries eventually jump over to branches of trigeminal nerve and ride with them until they reach their target structures.